Well, hello again, diecast collectors. So today I'm going to do an unboxing of four new cars. Uh, I bought these off eBay from a seller, Mini Cars World. They have over 2,000 positive ratings, or they seem to be a good seller. But I thought I'd just share, you know, how they pack their stuff. So they reused a box here of some hobby thinner, but they did tape up all the corners and stuff. Not the middle, so I think if it rained on this box, it might actually survive. Not really sure, but let's open this thing up and take a look. Let's see what's happening here. Mm, let's see, because it is a recycled box, there's no standard cut lines, but uh, I think I'll get through it. Okay, so we got some. Uh, Bubble wrap. Alright, so basically this content shouldn't really shift around and cause any damage, so I think the seller knows what they're doing, otherwise they probably wouldn't have 2,000 positive reviews on the uh, feedback on eBay. Alright, so that's interesting. They threw in a USB micro C cable which uh, my uh, Samsung phone actually uses, so that's good. So, this is what I've ordered. We're gonna start with the uh, G-Wagon, I guess. Let's start with this, this crazy pink one. You know, I have a whole bunch of Kyoshos in my collection now, but I don't think I have a crazy pink one, which is probably why I ordered this one. This particular G-Wagon from Kyosho comes in all sorts of crazy colors. Let's just take a look at the box actually. There we go. So those are your color choices for this. And this is from 2019. So it's a fairly recent model I guess, being 20, early 2021 when I'm filming this. Not sure when this mold was made though. Alright. So Kyosho is I separate and put into a different display case. So I'm going to take this off the stand. Alright, so... A little history on the G-Wagon, I never knew that these things are actually made by Magna Stair and they're marketed as, you know, branded as being uh, Mercedes. Uh, the G-Wagon has a long history, it dates back to 1979 and is still sold today. So only the Unimog is uh, a longer running uh, plate nameplate within the Mercedes portfolio. It was originally developed for the, the military and... Uh, so, like 40, 50 different countries use a, a G-Wagon in their military service, including America. So, let's take a look here. Oh, and also, in 1983, a modified G-Wagon won the Paris Dakar Rally, which I think is pretty impressive. Alright, so now let's take a look at this uh, actual casting here. Start with the front this time around. So this front grille is physically molded in. You can hear the ribbing. Same here. Obviously the plastic inserts. This little, I'm guessing those might be tow hooks or fog lights. Maybe they're fog lights because they're silver. The turn indicators are just painted silver. I think there's another 64 scale die cast where they actually have plastic pieces glued there. But uh for some reason, I just decided to go with this crazy pink Kyosho. Alright, to the side, we have the uh, typical OEM wheels, which is nice. We have these side running boards. And then the exhausts are actually running out the sides underneath those running boards. So, interesting. This is a G63, I think it's saying there on the bottom. Not a G55. So, okay. All right, so door handles are molded in, but they are painted black, along with the molding along the sides here. A little V8 stamp stamping there. Side mirror is never painted on Kyosho's, it seems. Black interior again with Kyosho. No extra paint. There's a sunroof, though, which is nice. Okay, let's get to the back here. So we have the AMG printing there on the right side. Painted door handle there. We have the plastic pieces for the tail lights. And then I'm guessing this is a reverse white light and maybe that's a red reflector. 
there's printing of the Mercedes logo there on the wheel cover and then it says G does that say 55 hmm it looks like it says 55 am I right it's hard to make out but on the bottom it said 65 anyways they probably look fairly similar in real life all right so yeah the exhausts come out the side they wouldn't be coming out the back No suspension on a on these newer Kyosho still. But there's tread. That's a new tread I've never seen before. Hmm. So pretty nice. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. Looking at the top here. So painted in ribbing there on the hood. The Mercedes logo on the front hood as well. Can it focus? I guess that's as good as it's going to get. I don't think it's legible, but I think you can see a star in that logo. Uh, windshield wipers, they're molded into the plastic and then they're painted a little black there. So yeah, okay, very nice. I'm happy with it. Let's get to the next one. Uh, chronologically, I guess it might be the Sesto Elemento. Oh, well actually before I open this, Still has the pricing on the box here. This one says 500 yen, which is around five dollars. The question is, when did this thing come out? Is there a date? Sometimes these boxes show a year. Here, 2012. So back in 2012, this car sold for around five dollars, and I'm guessing it's still less than six dollars in 2021 money. The question is, is it good? So this is brand new, I think. Maybe not. No, it, it must have been open because I knew what color I was going to get. And it happens to be this crazy orange color. So, let's see. It could have come in other crazy color scenarios, the all black one or the white one. But I wanted the craziest uh, orange. So the Sesto Elemento, this Italian Sesto Elemento means sixth element because carbon on the periodic table of elements is number six. And a large part of this car is made out of carbon fiber. The whole frame, all the body panels, the drive shaft, and then even a lot of the suspension parts are all carbon. So this thing only weighs a thousand kilograms in real life. Oh, look at this mirror. It's, uh, it's totally dent. It's, yeah, it's out of alignment there. Uh, it's based on the Gallardo, so it's all, it's, uh, and it has 500, 5.2 liter V10 engine with 562 horsepower. And being so light, only a thousand kilograms, it could accelerate from zero to 60 in 2.5 seconds and go 221 miles per hour. So pretty fast car, but they only made about 20 of these in the real world. And they're around $3 million each. So it's a rare car now looking at the model itself you can clearly see this mirror is totally rammed in so that's not good mm. the question is it's not it's a really rigid mirror it's not flexible like mini GT so I'm afraid to try to take it out I'll just break it I'll have to take a closer look later off camera but we got these black OEM-ish wheels, the rear tires dragging on the body, so Kyoshis aren't really the best rollers, but I'm okay with that. I don't really play with my toys, they just go in a display case. Okay, so look at the back. Looks like they're printed on taillights there. Yeah, it's not plastic this time because they're so thin. And then what's in the middle here? This red thing in the middle. I'm not sure what that is. It might be the differential cover. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Is that printing Lamborghini there in the middle on the top? Try to f not sure if I can focus because it's red on orange. Not enough contrast. All right. So I guess that's it for the back. And I guess these. Two circles might be the fuel fillers, possibly. I don't see it on that side. 
I think these are the intakes for the engine and then these are maybe heat vents maybe the exhaust I think the exhausts are somewhere up here from what I read if anyone knows where the exhausts are please make a comment so styling wise it is really interesting to have this side mirror kind of jutting forward like that but I'm not sure if it's for the for good or bad I think without the side mirror the car would look a lot nicer but legally you know you gotta have those mirrors hmm nice printing of the logo there we have the plastic uh, inserts there it's so deep in the front end but there is texture it seems on those uh, grills here on the sides there's textured plastic there and this thing just yeah it does stop it's just painted black in there so that's what the front end looks like uh, one thing I learned about this car also is uh, the interior as far as the seats there actually aren't any seat frames the carbon tub itself has seats molded into it and then they literally like glue on or adhere pads to them to create the seat so they're pads stuck to the frame that creates the seats there's no separate actual seats so if you're shorter I guess you just have to have thicker pads if you're taller thinner pads or maybe no pads uh, so again yeah that that side mirror is really irking me but I'll have to try to fix it later all right, so let's move on then. So the next one here would be the Aventador LP724. Now the first uh, Aventadors came out in uh, 2011 and then they sold up to 2017 in a bigger displacement and they sold over 5,000 Aventadors. But this happens to be a special 50th anniversary model and they only made 200 of these in 2013. And the 50th anniversary had a little bit of an operated engine, which made 710 horsepower. And a lot of the bodywork was a little, was tweaked for this model as well. So that's what I learned about this car. It has all-wheel drive, six, a 6.5 liter V12 in the back there. All right, so quick look around. Let's start with the side this time. So. Unfortunately, I don't have a box on this one. I'm not sure when this model came out, but this is definitely a quality problem right here. They didn't paint that all the way black. The wheels are nice. The surface of the tire seems a little messed up, though. I'm not sure what's going on there. Okay, so this doesn't go in at all. It's just flat and painted black. But you know the real car, I'm sure there's going to be a grill there or going in much further so that's not the greatest the black wasn't per perfectly painted there either there's some green showing through so that's not great <clears throat> look at the mirrors at least the mirrors seem to be symmetric so that's nice uh, you got the glass here on the back showing some uh, cross brace and the engine back there so that's pretty nice to look at but again, the plain black interior, there's molded in details, but being black, you really can't see much. Oh well. Alright, so the front, you got the Lamborghini logo there. Oh, noticing the paint, it's not so smooth. Yeah, there's some contaminants, I think, in there. Or could it possibly be paint rash already? I'd imagine this die cast isn't that old but maybe it is because I mean if the first Aventadors if this model of an Aventador came out in 2013 yeah, this model could be seven years old oh well that's a shame all right so the frontier again is so black and dark but it looks like there's a texture here yeah I think there's a, yeah okay and let's take a look at the back. All right, so the exhausts, they're molded in details. It just wasn't painted on these two ribs here, so it doesn't look so great. I might have to take a silver Sharpie to that. But you can see a texture here on the grills here again, the back grills, not on the back here. And then the plastic insert there, and it's painted over black to show this design theme that's carrying a new Lambo is this Y theme. Uh, 
Hmm. All right. So then you got the brand there. So you know what? That's not plastic. Actually, that's just red printed. So these Y's are just red printed on top of this black. So there's no translucent, but I guess it makes sense because if the wires are the lights themselves, you're never going to be able to make those separate plastic pieces. So I think this is just all one opaque black piece of plastic and then they print it on the red there to indicate the uh, rear lights. But the exhaust tip is not so great. So this, this model is not up to the standards of Kyosho that I'm used to. Again, look at this, the green showing through there in there so there's like four problems here there's some printing here 50th anniversary 50 there a reflector this side same thing so that's good reflector up there possibly a turn signal okay so this is actually a piece of plastic molded on part of the for this front lip front splitter Hmm. So unfortunately, quality wise, this thing has a lot of issues. Basically the paint isn't so great, but uh, it's still a nice looking car and I do like this green. It's not metallic, it's just a solid green, but it seems also there's a little speck of paint inside that windshield. It's on the inside. So a lot of quality problems going on with Kyosho whenever this was made. That's a shame. That's a real shame. Okay, so the last model. Let's go into this. This is the Phantom 8, but it's modified by Mansory. And uh, I have the limousine, and, but uh, I didn't talk about Mansory itself. I talk, talked most about just the Phantom 8. So this time around, I just did a little research on Mansory, and they're a brand out of uh, Germany, and it's named after a person, last name Mansory. Karush, I believe is his first name. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly though. And so they started in uh, 1989. And this, uh, this actual die cast here is by Time Micro. Okay, so we got that. Take a look at this. No tape holding it together. Just opens. A little back card. Okay. Alright, there's two screws holding that. Uh, Alright, sorry, 17 minutes, so I'm not going to take it off the base, but this is obviously purple, but it's not glossy. It's like a satin or a matte finish. And I did do a search online and looked up a purple Phantom Mansory, but it's not a Phantom 8. There's a real car, but it's a Phantom 7, it looks like, that's in purple by Mansory. But, anyways. These wheels are made by Mansory, and they're 24-inch wheels. They're forged as well. So that's a quality wheel, and then they do a lot of interior modifications, and obviously this side duct and the whole front end. I think these side skirts might also be by Mansory, and this rear exhaust uh, lower bumper fascia. Those would be by Mansory as well. All right, so back to the casting here we have the Rolls-Royce printing there on that uh, chrome piece of plastic which has a problem there's something a contaminant in the chrome itself I've, that's horrible that's too bad there's no way I could fix that unless I resprayed the whole thing with chrome paint hmm you do have these tiny little dots for the sensors the rear backup sensors I don't know what those are though. Those other dots, tow hook holes. No, it doesn't make doesn't seem to make sense. Backup cameras maybe. All right, so we got the side yeah, contaminant there. That's dust. Hmm. Okay, this side isn't too bad. There's some sort of divot there. I'm sorry. I'm looking at it with the naked eye here. There seems to be a little divot right here. I'm not sure what's going on there, so that's not great. Yeah, back to this contaminant there. Let's go to the front end. So the Parthenon grill there seems to be okay. Chromed out. You got the Mansory logo there where the license plate would be. 
little black square, which I'm guessing is some sort of sensor of sorts. This purple spirit of ecstasy. We have a Rolls Royce. Is there printing? It almost looks like it's a, a race square. And then it, I don't know if there's anything printed on it though. It's so small. I can't even tell with the, the naked eye. And there's so much reflection. I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up either. Oh well, sorry. Uh, the headlights are pretty neat. It looks like there's a separator in there. So it looks like four headlights. There's a little silver printing here. That might be a running light. A little highlight of silver here. Maybe a piece of chrome accent on the real car. So look at the hood though. Yeah, so this is a paint problem. Paint problem. That's not so bad. So, I don't know, Time Micro. I think this... Again, there's a lot of uh, paint problems. I don't know why companies can't make a car with without paint flaws. I have a suspicion this is painted by hand. Literally someone put it on a jig and they spray painted it by hand because that would be the only explanation why you get these contaminants in there. If it was machine sprayed, it should enter like a vacuum chamber, I think. I don't know, I'm not a factory owner, but that's what I assume to keep all the paint out. Mini GT has machine painting and that's why their models generally look awesome. I don't see many with paint problems, but this one, this one does. I'm really critical because this model is kind of expensive, so, oh well. But anyways, uh, seems like the seller at least packs their cars nice and it's beyond their control to tell Time Micro to do a better job, so I think seller, the seller's great. And, you know, I guess in general, the models are okay. This flaw here. So, get those side mirrors again. Maybe that is normal. From the top view, that doesn't look so bad. But from that, from this view, clearly the, the left mirror of this car is, uh... Sorry, for some reason I won't focus. Clearly that left mirror is just messed up. All right. Well, anyways, I guess that's it for today. So take care.